What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Doing Or Me. And on this channel, not only do I like to talk about Doctor Who and gaming and what's going on right now within pop culture news in general and defending the fans and audiences, I'm also a major weeb. If you can't tell by my gunpla and some of the stuff behind me, I like anime a lot. And over the past couple of months, we've had individuals come out, whether it's from Japan, whether it's from some of the dubbing companies, some of these areas, and basically say, hey, we are rejecting the Western way of doing things, and we are rejecting the modern day way of intersectionalism, changing things for the sake of a different audience, changing things for a broad to try to get this broader view of audiences. It's been a nice moment. You know, I have this particular article from Battling Under Comics pulled up where you had the Naruto and Bleach Anime Studio president reject that idea, stating that it loses what makes anime anime. You you lose this, this particular soul and you make it bland, boring, and lackluster and not anime anymore. You're making it for somebody else because a lot of the time, because the majority of the time, when people are making these shows, when people are making uh, these products, they're making it for the Japanese audience, not for a global audience, because they know the global audience will end up accepting what the Japanese audience has accepted. That's how it works. Anime fans love anime because of what it represents, its culture, its way of doing things, so on and so forth. So when you get a story like this coming out here, Disney Plus Japan exec admits anime industry making a shift towards more acceptable expressions in order to appeal to wider audiences. It becomes kind of concerning. Now, I don't know how broad this is. I don't know exactly how this guy is coming out here and saying this. But for the most part about this, it very much looks like they are beginning to push this idea, at least over at the Disney uh, marketplace in Japan, that, hey, in order to get your show into the rest of the world and make it more acceptable for the West, we need to be changing the ways we do things. We need to be make it more acceptable for the Western way of doing things and not just for the Japanese way of doing things. And for the most part, this entire back and forth was all about how distribution of anime has changed. The distribution market is no longer, you know, terrestrial. It's now streaming based. People can get instant access to a lot of the stuff. People don't need to wake weeks on end and People don't need to wait weeks on end to get access to the next episode. We can just distribute it all out at once, give it to both Japan and America at the same time, and everybody's happy, right? Right? Well, as time went on, you, you ended up getting some interesting said about this whole uh, simulcasting situation. Yatawa then revealed that a few years ago, the North American market was growing, so we focused on storytelling that would be more received in North America. In Asia, a different genre was being received, and we as creators were conscious of the fact that we had to focus on domestic North American and Asian markets. Now, however, the same fun and excitement can be experienced at the same time in a region, he added. This is how common Japanese animation has become around the world. What we thought was the Japanese market is now accepted in all regions. I believe that the market has matured to that extent. And as he continued on, the curiosity piqued by his mention of anime acceptance it, on the global stage, Mataba then asked ya Yawata, Japanese animation has a history of unique evolution that is not found anywhere else. There is even a kind of radicalized expression. When it comes to distribution to the world, is it necessary to change the style? In turn, the Disney exec opined, I don't think there has been a major shift. The fundamental storytelling, the precision of action, etc. have not changed but there may be a shift towards adopting more acceptable expressions. 
in order to see to be seen by many people expressions that do not hurt or mislead people should be taken for granted he continued that is not a negative thing but perhaps an evolution when video gamers were the focus there was a tendency for only those who wanted to buy them to do so but our awareness is changing because we are now distributing to a larger market through a service that can be viewed at any time by adults and children alike now i i want to take his words charitably i want to take his words the way they sound it does for the most part sound like hey we want to just keep giving this out to the most audience as possible give it to as many people as possible but when you're talking about a disney exec not it doesn't matter if he's japanese it doesn't matter if he's tapped into the anime industry this is still a disney exec i don't have any charity for these individuals i have very little charity for people like that because all i've been seeing is a consistent push even by individuals from japan to make things more acceptable for a more western audience and change things for this particular audience because i take you over here to the japan times now, this was an article all about the creators of Yakuza 8, Like a Dragon 8, whatever you want to call it, Infinite Wealth, that decided to come out here and openly admit that he sent his game before launch over to a lot of the localizers and requested, hey, tell us what is bad about this particular story. What, what is no longer acceptable within these regions? And what should we take out and change? Some of these things were representations of women saying they shouldn't have that low skirts they, they they're too sexy we need to take this out you know sexist cliches or over exaggeration and when it comes to lgbtq representation or even even get this if a guy was wearing black boots big and a big leather coat that was bad because it reinforced the ideas of yahtzees yeah can't show them at all can't show the bad guys at all can't have somebody walking around in big leather boots and a big leather jacket oh that's a bad idea right there other things that were critiqued on again this was from a japanese director a japanese producer and a japanese product other things that they were getting criticism on was use of alcohol politics and religion within all this and they decided to change it for the western audience when well, you're seeing stories like this coming from japan coming from people that want to get that broader audience and you're seeing a disney executive coming out here saying similar things it leads you to start wondering what is actually going on right now and could there possibly be some sort of craziness going on within the anime industry that we're not aware of yes i showed you at the beginning we had the naruto and bleach studio president say we need to reject that idea outright we need to punt that to half court because the reality is the global markets like what the japanese audience gets and once that particular notion and this is an ideology that has been starting to persist all throughout the anime industry and has been something that a lot of people have been gravitating towards fans and creators alike because you come over here visions of mana producer refuses to change series identity for a western audience it is best to deliver the game based on the developer's creative vision that's what more people want more people want this particular style of storytelling. More people want less censorship and what the creator intended the entire time. They don't like what the dubbing studios have been doing. They don't like what these studios have been going around and forcing them to do or doing willingly and censoring stuff out, changing stuff and making stuff more acceptable because it takes away from the soul of an anime project, a JRPG, so on and so forth takes away that that little bit of them that makes them so unique and favorable to these particular audiences within the west if if you target that audience you know the audience that likes what you're doing right now you will get more of an audience because people like that people like that uniqueness that anime gives people like the soul of anime over most of the stuff that we're getting right now western entertainment is pretty much dead comics video games tell tv hollywood people are going to the east people are going to japan and people are consuming this particular style of content over what we're getting here because it's better it's more unique and it's 
it, it's a thriving economy that tells good stories. Heck, we also had the Final Fantasy Tactics director respond to the Western localization discourse surrounding Unicorn Overlord. It is unacceptable for someone to alter a work without considering the original author's intent. Another instance of a creator coming out here and saying, we need to stop pandering to the West. We need to stay true to what we've been putting out. We need to stay true to the whole premise of anime and this particular medium, which is uniquely Japanese, a uniquely Japanese cultural style. And don't acknowledge what Western audiences want. We want to do what we know best for our audience here in Japan. These are made for Japanese audiences first, Western audience is second, and we need to keep that in mind at all times. And you want to know why we need to keep that in mind at all times? Get stories like this. Localizers upset over the ancient Magnus, Magus Bride manga AI translation. This was a big situation that started spiral out of control and which led to these discourses and discussions going on right now and which we were seeing localizers here in the States, here in the West, abroad, what have you, openly admitting that they prefer to go around censoring different products, censoring different creations, and that because studios over in Japan are starting to question, you know what, why don't we start doing AI translation to help get our projects out a whole lot faster and give it to our audiences simultaneously, even within manga form, you had localizers furious because they wouldn't be able to inject their ideology within it anymore. They weren't going to be able to push what they want to do anymore and this whole ai situation made them very threatened at the sole premise that they could lose their ability to manipulate the story in any way they deem fit we also have had tons of examples of localizers and mess ups coming from this by the western audience mind you we have this from niche gamer a plus years of awful politicized english localization in games and anime this is a constant thread, a mega thread, a mega article of all sorts of different examples of localizers, Western audiences, and people changing these stories for what they viewed was the more appropriate thing and making it better in their eyes, mind you. A lot of these localizers think they're making it better. And what happens is they get called out for it. They get rejected and people get furious about it. And this hurts the general medium as a whole. So again, come over back to this guy. Come back around to the beginning. This Disney exec, he might just be saying, we need to, you know, AI it up, change a thing here or there that is dangerous discourse coming from these people because it leads me to be a wary of where it might go next. Will they start censoring out what they do? Will they start changing what makes anime anime to try to appeal to a Western audience that honestly doesn't exist and go the same path that Hollywood, comics, Western gaming, so on and so forth have decided to go down as well. But I'm gonna leave it there, guys. Let me get you guys' thoughts on all this down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it up, friends, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell for every time I put out a new video and go live, guys. And I'll see you all on the next one. Bye for now.